What's a man? What makes a man? What does it mean to be a man? It's a simple question, and it's actually an important question, especially in this day and age, where people are talking about toxic masculinity and all kinds of nonsense that just, just bullshit, as far as I'm concerned. Being a man is a simple question, but it's a profound question. And the answer is equally simple and equally profound. And the answer is this. A man can set aside his emotions, control his emotions, and allow his reason and logic to dictate his actions. That's it. That's the answer. That's what it means to be a man. You can allow your reason to dictate your actions as opposed to your emotions. You see, every other organism, species, animal, insect, what have you, is ruled by fight or flight. And it's quite obvious, it's quite necessary as a matter of fact. You, you have to fight to get your prey in order to eat, in order to survive, and you have to flee from your predator in order to not be eaten. <laughs> it's very simple. Now, this necessary emotion, this fight or flight response, it is characteristic of every animal on the face of the planet except human beings, and not even all human beings, except men. Because men, us men, we are past masters at setting aside our fight or flight response and using our reason and logic to figure out the best solution to a given problem. That's why we have created the civilization that we live in. Everything that you see, the entire planet, the entire civilization that we are lucky enough to enjoy is based on this ability that is central to being a man. Let me explain it a little bit further. Suppose there are these two soldiers and they're walking along and there's a war going on. They're walking along and they get to the bottom of a hill and at the top of this hill there's the enemy soldier, an enemy soldier with a machine gun, and he's shooting down the hill. Now, both of these soldiers at the bottom of the hill, they do the exact same thing. They turn and run. They run away from the machine gun fire. But I can tell you that even though both of them looked to have done the exact same thing, I can tell you right now that one of them acted like a coward, and the other acted like a man, acted heroically. And the difference is quite simple. You see, one soldier saw the enemy with the machine gun and he allowed his fight or flight or fight response to dictate his actions. He allowed his fear to dictate what he would do. And what did he do? He ran. He ran as far as his little feet could take him, right? The other one, the other soldier, he also felt fear. He's not inhuman. He's not a sociopath. He felt fear. He was terrified. He saw the enemy soldier with the machine gun and he was terrified, but he did not allow his fear to rule him. Instead, he looked up to see if he could do anything about the situation. Realized that he could not, turned and ran. That's what made him heroic. And more to the point, you see, the man who stops and sets aside his fear and looks at the situation, he might find a solution. In the hypothetical of the two soldiers, the soldier who set aside his fear, maybe he looked up the hill and he saw that there was like a little nook on the side of the hill. A little nook, a little rock, a boulder, something that he could run towards and hide behind, safe from the machine gun fire. And of course, he's, he's, he's crouching there, terrified, behind that boulder, and the machine gun is just shooting down, trying to kill him, of course, and of course he's terrified. If he were an animal, he'd run. If he were an animal, he'd run and be killed by the machine gun fire. But he's a man. He's a man who's using his reason to dictate his actions. So he hides behind the boulder, the machine gun is shooting, and finally the machine gunner has to reload. And in that reloading, the soldier pops out from behind the boulder, lifts up his rifle, 
and shoots the enemy soldier dead. He takes the hill, and maybe by taking that hill, they win the battle, and because of that one battle, they win the war, right? Maybe. Maybe that's the story. Maybe that's the story. Well, it's the story almost in everything that human beings have ever done. The difference between success and failure is more often than not your willingness to set aside your emotion. Because it's not just fear of getting shot at by the machine gun fire. It's, for instance, marrying the wrong woman because she's a great lay and every time you fuck her you have a great time and you know your lust, your emotion, the, the sexual desire is so powerful that it overwhelms your rational objections to this bad marriage. right? Or maybe your greed, your greed at maybe you're going to win a million dollars by sending a few thousand to this uh, Nigerian prince. Your greed leads you to losing all your money. Hmm? You see, the Catholic Church is very wise because the Catholic Church realized that it is emotions that lead us astray. It's reason, controlling our emotions, that leads us to the good life. The soldier who did not run away who looked at the hill, saw that boulder that could protect him, and in the end, killed the machine gunner and took the hill and won the battle that won the war. That is why being a man is so important. It, it's not out of a sense of empty pride. Oh, I'm a man, I control my emotions. No, that's not the issue. It's not about aggrandizement. It is about getting the best opportunities Controlling your emotions, not allowing yourself to be dictated to by emotions, and using your reason to find opportunities, opportunities for success, to be bigger, to be better. Our entire civilization is based on that, on using reason to overcome our basic fight or flight responses, using reason to build something better, to find opportunities where our fear would have blinded us. That's the point. That's, that's why it's so important to be a man, being a man in the sense that I'm explaining to you now. In our day to day, it's very easy to set aside our emotions and use reason. I mean, we do it all the time, okay? What matters is the crunch time. And th this is what separates you know, the men from the boys, or. Let me rephrase that. This is what separates men from everybody else, including women. Look at women at crunch time, when things are really tough. What happens to most women? Not all women, but most women. At crunch time, they cry. That's what they do. They cry, they weep, they fall apart. Lesser men, you know, wimps, little faggots, what do they do? They panic. At crunch time, they panic. And that is why they are lesser men. It's not, you know, a lesser man is not somebody who's sort of like physically weak or perhaps has a high-pitched voice. No, no, no. Those are just external signifiers and they are not always accurate. Because you can be a big, strong, brawny man with a really deep baritone voice, but at crunch time and you panic like a fucking pussy. Hmm? Well, we know who you are now, don't we? Yeah, I think we do. The external signifiers don't mean shit. What matters at crunch time, controlling your emotions, setting them aside, and acting rationally, using reason and logic to get to the best outcome. At crunch time, you'll see who's just some weakling loser and who's somebody whom you can really respect. Now, there's something else about this, this that I'm explaining to you, okay, that a lot of people confuse the notion of setting aside emotions with repressing them or denying them. And that's not the case at all. You see, a man can experience profound emotions and, and feel them deeply. Profound emotions and delicate emotions of love and tenderness. There's, they are not incompatible. On the contrary, I would venture to say that a real man allows himself to feel true emotions, real emotions. Emotions of various sorts. Love, tenderness, also anger, hatred even. But it's again the ability to set aside those emotions that matter. A sociopath feels no emotion. 
A sociopath, he's a damaged individual. For whatever reason, his environment or his genes or whatever the cause, a sociopath, that is, a man who feels no emotions, well, he's not really a man, he's just like a robot. Okay, You wouldn't call a robot a man. You wouldn't call a robot heroic, now would you? Of course not. See, it's the ability to feel the emotions and not be dictated by them. That's what makes a man. A lot of times you'll meet men who claim to be acting rationally, but in fact they are rationalizing their behavior. Now, what's the difference between acting rationally and rationalizing? Well, very simple. A man who rationalizes his behavior uses the tools and the patina of logic and reason to explain what is fundamentally an emotional decision. Cowards do this all the time. Cowards will try to explain away their decision and try to explain how what they did, how they succumbed to their fight or flight response, was really the rational choice at that given moment. They, they always love to do that because, of course, they know the shame of being cowards. See, at the example of the two soldiers at the bottom of the hill, yeah, suppose both of them ran away, right? But one actually looked at the situation and realized that there was no chance of victory, and so he ran whereas the other just succumbed to fight or flight response. And what's interesting about cowards is that the more they rationalize, the more they are aware that what they did was cowardly. The men who look at a situation and know that there's no way that they can succeed and therefore they run away because that's the only rational response, they never have a need to rationalize, you'll find. They'll just tell you, look, there was nothing I can do, so I had to run, man. That's that. And you know, it's the rationalizers, the cowards, the guys who succumb to their emotions. They're going to go on and on and on trying to explain away their failure. At the end of the day, they're not trying to explain their failure to you. They're trying to explain it away to themselves and they will never succeed. Okay? This all goes back to fight or flight. This all goes back to our, our, our primordial uh, essence. We are, <laughs> we are animals. Okay, we are at core animals and, and we are ruled by fight or flight. But what makes us great, what makes us men, what has allowed us to create this incredible civilization that we live in is our ability to set aside our fear, to set aside all emotions, including the need to fight. Because many times, you'll find that you wind up working with people whom you despise, but you realize that working with them will be to your benefit. Well, what are you doing there? You're setting aside your urge to fight in order to get something positive out of it. That is what makes men wonderful. That is what makes us the dominant species on the planet. And I say men, not women. Women, women enjoy our civilization as honored guests, really. They are guests in our world. And yes, there are many women who can act rationally, you know, for the most part. But when push comes to shove, you know, they're, they're going to wind up, you know, you, you, you push them hard enough and at crunch time, all women, they're going to wind up being just a, a puddle on the floor, okay? Because they are women. Women and children, they are not men. Only we men at crunch time can set aside our fear because that's what it is at the end of the day, it's fear. Only we can do this. And this is a powerful thing that we have. It is the thing that separates us from all the beasts of the earth. It separates us from all of the lesser civilizations because there are men who as a, spe as a race, as a group of people cannot do this. It's as simple as that. They cannot control their fight or flight responses. And it is unfortunate and they create lesser or civilizations or non-existent civilizations. And we don't have to mention which ones they are because we all know which ones they are, right? Yes. But there are men, subspecies of the human race, we men who can control our fear and move forward to our advantage, to the advantage of our species. Everything that we have is because of this ability that we have. This incredible civilization that we have, all of this, all of this civilization, this culture, 
the wonderful music, the wonderful literature, the great art forms that we have created, all of this is because of us men. We are not toxic. On the contrary, we are the most fruitful species on the planet. And everyone who is lucky enough to enjoy the products of our efforts should thank us. So when somebody says that, oh, you're just uh, toxic masculinity, uh-uh. You say, fuck you. The very existence that you enjoy is because of us.